on and they will preview the hockey. Yeah. They're going first. Let's get that graphic going. We are here at 44. All right, so fellas, who are the teams to watch this year in the National Hockey League? I'm going to go with you first, JB. Um, so there are a few teams that I want to watch because this year is going to be different. You're not going to have like the regular Eastern Western conference format. You're putting teams in a bunch of different divisions. Um, so a team I'm looking at this year, um, is a team that made the playoffs last year. They crashed out. I'm going to be looking at the Calgary flames from the standpoint that the Calgary flames didn't really have good goaltending last year. And one of the biggest things that they actually, they went out and they signed Jacob Markstrom, which may have been a bit of a mistake because he's carrying a huge cap hit and he's not the youngest guy in the world either. But there are a team I'm looking, I'm, I'm going to look at. And another team I'm going to look at is another team that a Canadian division as well is the Montreal Canadiens. They sh wouldn't have made the playoffs in a regular year, but they ended up getting that 12th seed and they beat the Pittsburgh Penguins yep. in the best of five. And then they actually gave Philly all they wanted in that series as well. So a lot of people are high on them, but then I've been reading up. A lot of people think that they're going to take a step back this year. They think that last year was like due to the bubble and it was school school. And the other team I'm going to, cause my boy, my buddy uh, who uh, still lives in Korea, uh, he'll be listening to this probably tomorrow sometime. Another team I'm going to look at, too, is another team for the Canadian division <laughs> is the Toronto Maple Leafs because the Maple Leafs have a lot of talent on that team, but they cannot win a playoff series. And I think that this is a year where they absolutely – they have to win a playoff series. They have to put up or shut up this year. So those are three teams I'm watching. There are some other teams that we probably will get into a little later as well, too. So Okay. Jerk, your team's uh, watch. So, you know, the, the immediate team that I have to name here, the defending Stanley Cup champions, getting the, the proverbial monkey off their back, the Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, after uh, the, the year prior in 2019, winning the President's Trophy, which means you finish the regular season as the best team, uh, but having the greatest regular season that we had seen in the sport in uh, a little over two decades, getting swept in the first round was an embarrassment. Everyone in that organization would admit that that was an all-time low for them. And it's something that they made good on and winning the cup this year. And, you know, we've spoken on it about in other shows, like wh whoever wants to put whatever asterisk they want to try uh, at the end of the day, Tampa won uh, the cup in the bubble. Uh, so they're, to me, they're intriguing because they're their superstar forward, former MVP Nikita Kucherov. He's going to miss a good chunk of the season, potentially the entire regular season uh, due to an injury. He, he tried to see if there was like, you know, rehab options, I believe it was his hip, but at the end of the day, he just opted for surgery. I think he kind of opted at the right time because, you know, if it if all goes well, he should be back come like the early stages of the playoffs, which will be key for them. But Tampa's still so talented. They're so deep. The, the Kucherov injury actually in hockey, if a guy is going to be out for a very significant amount of time, you can actually uh, send his cap hit into the long-term injury reserve. And so that mm -hmm. cap hit comes off the books, which they use to re-sign a couple of their players. They're still so deep. They're still so yeah. talented. And they, they have a legitimate shot at repeating. And another team I want to give some love to, I'm a, uh, this isn't my favorite team, but you know uh, they're kind of actually a division rival to my team normally. Uh, the Colorado Avalanche, they've been building something special the last couple of years. And, you know, if, if they had just gotten a little bit of better injury luck last year, you know, their starter and their backup goalie, got hurt in the playoffs if they have you know a little bit of better luck they maybe make it to the conference finals last year uh that is such a talented team nate mckinnon miko ranton and uh kale mccarr uh in our year-end show that we did for off the ball network he was one of the young defensemen i mentioned he is supremely talented by the way last year was his rookie season and he was <laughs> breaking some records so that 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 just talented core of guys you know if colorado just gets a little bit of more luck I can see them making a really good run this year. Yeah, um, that, that was good. And um, I like what you brought up about the cap hit because the St. Louis Blues did the same thing last year with Vladimir uh, Tarasenko. Um, yeah. yeah, but that, that that's good. I, I think one of my concerns about the Avalanche, though, because uh, they're, uh, my favorite team is Dallas. So right. they have we have a long history with them. But I think one of my biggest concerns with uh, Colorado, and you saw this last year in the, in the playoff series against Dallas, they don't have – 
second and third line scoring that's consistent and that actually can come back to hurt you in the playoffs. So right. like uh, they, they definitely, they have a beastly first line. Um, if they get just mediocre goaltending, they're going to be a threat to make the finals and maybe win it. If they just get mediocre goaltending with those guys, but you just worry that in the playoff series, if, let's say Brantanen or McKinnon go cold, where are they going to get that other scoring from? And that's something that I think that they need to like kind of address maybe at the trade deadline because their second their second and third line scoring really dried up uh, against Dallas last year, yeah. along with the injuries, and that kind of doomed them. Right. Yeah, de- definitely, definitely a significant point. The NHL, like come playoff time, it is very, very important. You get that depth line score. Yeah. It's part of the reason why Tampa – one, because just before the COVID stoppage, they made two critical moves at the deadline and getting, you know, not, not big name guys. They got a Blake Coleman and a Barclay Goudreau. These are not household names, but those are guys that provide energy and some timely goal scoring. They do the dirty things uh, on the ice the, with body checking and getting close up to the net to bother goalies that the superstars just don't do. Like, you do need that. So it's definitely it's definitely a concern for Colorado. Although, I, I got to say, like, they were one of my winners in the offseason. One of my first articles I did for the network was giving winners of the offseason. Uh, they had a really good offseason. Brendan Saad was a solid trade for them, uh, getting him from Chicago. He's a, a reliable 20-goal scorer in his career. He's won, some, uh, he's won some Stanley Cups, so he brings that championship-winning experience. And I think if Andre Burakovsky, you know, because the thing is, is that it's all about line management in the NHL, kind of like in a batting lineup with baseball. It's all about how you manage the lines. If they can try to you know, balance out those second and third lines, because they actually they have the players to do it. I think it's just all about finding those connections. It's a legitimate thing. If you get two guys that have chemistry, you do not separate them from one another. So if Colorado yeah. can find that, I, I think that's that's where they make up for all the for all the need for depth. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so, fellas, the players to watch. So, I'm going to go to the players to watch. I mean, there's so many names that can be named. I'm, I'm going to start off with uh, with some players on a team that JB mentioned earlier, the Montreal Canadiens and, you know, what they could do this season. And, you know, to me, uh, th- the uh, the key to that team this year, obviously with Carey Price, if he plays really good again, like he kind of showed off in the bubble, they're going to be a threat. Um, but uh, two young guys on that team, Nick Suzuki and Jesperi Kokaniemi, if those two guys have breakout years, uh, they're going to they're gonna they're gonna give Montreal some hope because those are two very talented guys. Kokaniemi, he had some injuries in his second year that kind of had him take a step back. Uh, but he played pretty well in the bubble when he was able to come back. Nick Suzuki played well in the bubble. So the, having those two young forwards there is nice. Uh, if they can if they can hold it down for that team, if they can provide, you know, uh, if they can round out the top six in Montreal, Montreal will have a chance to be very competitive. And uh, another team that I got a name here, uh, this is one of the contenders uh, in their division. If Carter Hart of the Philadelphia Flyers, if he takes yet another step in his development, he already became an all-star caliber goalie last year. If he can take that up to a superstar caliber goalie, the Philadelphia Flyers would be the favorite in the East because goaltending takes you far in the playoffs. And if this young kid, I, JB, correct me if I'm wrong, I think he's only 22 years old. If yeah. this kid solidifies himself as a superstar this season, Philly will have a cup contending team for years to come because he is that talented. He by himself can win them a playoff series. Oh yeah, he was he was uh he was fabulous in um in the second round against the Islanders. Uh he was fabulous in game 5 and game 6. Uh you know, he and they won both of those games in overtime, but yeah. Um yeah, uh, those are some good names. Um I'm actually going to go with another I'm going to go with some other goaltenders and one guy I'm really interested in looking at this year because he had a down year last year and he was actually benched in the playoffs is Jordan Bennington. Was was 2019 a mirage? Right. Like he's not bad, but he was outstanding, and he was the reason why they won the Stanley Cup in, in 2019. He stood on his head uh, so many situations, like. Uh, but he really took a step back last year, and he lost his job. Jake Allen actually was the goalie in the closeout game when they lost to Vancouver. So, yeah, is he going to return back to like 2018, 2019 Jordan Bennington, or is he going to be more of like the 2019, 2020 Jordan Bennington? Because if he is, I really think that maybe St. Louis is not going to be as good as right. uh, 
they once were because a lot of people had them winning the championship again last year. Yeah. You know, because they're a very deep team. Um, the other goalies I want to look at, and this is a tandem, what's going to happen in Vegas? Because uh, yeah, who's your goalie? Is it Robert Lerner or is it uh, Marc-Andre Fleury? And, you know, it wasn't really surprising to me that they couldn't move Marc-Andre Fleury because there aren't a lot of teams jumping up to give a 35, 36-year-old goalie paying them, you know, six, $7 million a year. And that's what the cap hit Fleury is. And I still think Fleury has some has some has, still has something left in the tank, but uh, I don't know. Is the relationship between his agent and the front office broken? You know, his uh, agent posted that you know divisive message on uh, Twitter with you know the knife in the back. So yeah. that that's those are um, some players um, I'm looking uh, I'm looking at as well. And I'm also going to look at uh, the swap that happened. Uh, so basically, Tory Crew came from Boston to St. Louis. And then Alex Pertangelo went from St. Louis to uh, to to the Golden Knights. So, yeah. which one of those guys has a better season? I actually prefer uh, Pertangelo, um, and mm-hmm. I think that he is going to give you know uh, Vegas you know something extra, especially on their power play. So, those are some players I think that are uh, you should watch out for this year. Yeah, especially you know you mentioned Petrangelo. He's he's that definitive top defenseman that Vegas has needed. At, Vegas has done such a masterful job at mass uh, at roster building uh, in their inaugural years here in the NHL. And Alex Petrangelo is that kind of guy that that teams uh, really want. You know, he's not going to put up those 60, 70 point season that these offensive dynamo defensemen will put up. But what he will do, he'll give you 40 to 50 points. He'll be there on the power play. And he could be one of the guys on the penalty kill. Like, he is the definition of such a well-rounded defenseman. And he was a massive pickup for Vegas. So he's definitely going to make a difference uh, for them uh, and and help out, you know, whoever is in net for Vegas at the end of the day. They're going to get some help with that guy in front of him. Kind of, you know, just really quick, some names I want to mention, you know, just in passing. Uh, I'm a big guy when it comes to young players. And the East Division has a lot of young guys there that are looking to take that next step. Uh, the New Jersey Devils and the New York Rangers in twenty in the 2019 draft, they picked one and two. New Jersey picked Jack Hughes, and the Rangers picked a young Finnish guy called Capo Caco. Heck of a name. Say it five times fast <laughs> for me. Uh, you know, those two guys, they kind of struggled in their rookie seasons. I think both of them for different reasons. I think uh, they had to really adjust to the physicality level. Both guys, you know, for Hughes, he played in the Canadian Hockey League, which is the – think of that kind of like the college, the NCAA for the NHL uh, to an extent in terms of like what the relationship is there. Uh, you know, he he's played guys his age his entire life. To play went out with grown men, I think he needed that first year. And same with Kako. Even though he played with some older players in, in Finland, it's a massive difference from the European style of play to the American style of play that I think he needed that first year to adjust. So those two, I think they maybe not breakout years per se this year, but look for them to look more comfortable on the ice for New Jersey and uh, the Rangers. And also the Rangers, they had the first pick this year and they got – Alexis Lafreniere, he's a very talented player. He in in his final uh, junior season, coach, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna find this wild. In 52 games, he scored 112 points. That is how dominant he was in his last year in juniors. He looked NHL ready. I think he is. I'm I'm almost certain he's gonna make the main roster for the Rangers this year. And if he comes out early, the Rangers could be they could be a really good team. Okay. All right. So, fellas, who are the sleepers in the, in the National Hockey League? I'm going to go with you first, JB. Your sleepers. Oh, uh, teams? Yeah, sleeper teams. Like teams that you Ooh. that can make a run that nobody really think about. Um, I think that if we look at it, like, what teams finished last year uh, well, um, I think Philadelphia is definitely a team that, uh, that could definitely go on a run this year. Uh, you know, like uh, – Nobody really expected them to, you know, I think before the year started last year, if you would have told people that the Flyers would have been a game away from the conference finals, I think people would have said that you were crazy. So I look at them, Philadelphia, I think they could definitely go on a run this year. And I also think Vancouver could definitely go on a run this year too. Um, They let go of Markstrom because he commanded such a high salary, but they replaced them with Braden Holtby at a a much 
more friendly deal and they have a great backup as well. So I think Vancouver is a team uh, to look out for this year as well. Um, and I would say another sleeper, um, I think the Carolina Hurricanes are going to be another sleeper. I think that like uh, they, uh, they just got a bad beat last year. They drew uh, a team in Boston that they just don't particularly match up well with. So um, they're in a different division this year. So uh, those were three teams that I think could definitely um, go on a run this year. Jerry, okay. your uh, your sleepers. Uh, so I'm gonna go a little bit of a dark horse route uh, in terms of some of these teams. So. Uh, again, you know, JB mentioned them before. I think if they get some of the right breaks, Montreal could definitely be a sleeper to be. Because the thing in the in the North Division, the Canadian Division, uh, in this season is that there's three definitive teams that most people agree will uh, take up the spot. So for for uh, for those, uh, JB alluded to it earlier. So instead of East versus West this year, the NHL has divided the league into four divisions. The top four teams that finish in uh, point totals at the end of the season will make the playoffs. Uh, so there is a wide open spot at the, n- the number four seed for uh, that North division. I think if things go right for Montreal, they could definitely be a team that, you know, they could sneak into that four spot if Carey Price uh, plays well once again. Uh, and some other teams that I think could do it. I, I-, I agree with uh, Carolina. Carolina is a team that if they could just not face Boston in one of the early rounds in the playoffs, they could definitely make a run. Uh I think the Rangers, you know, I just mentioned them earlier, you know, even aside from the young talent they had, if you look at last season, the Rangers are so unique because they aren't one of those teams that just got lucky with the expansion. If every, if if the world had been normal last year, there was a a legitimate chance that the Rangers actually could have made the playoffs because this, this was the case of last season. They would have a month where they go like nine, three and one. But then the next seven games, they would go like two and five. And then they would have a four-game winning streak. And then they would lose three of the next four. They were so up and down last season that if they just have a stronger consistency in play, if things had gone normal, they actually could have legitimately made the playoffs in a year that all of us thought, wait, they should be rebuilding. How did they make the playoffs so quickly? So, And that's the beauty of hockey. A quote-unquote rebuilding team can turn things around in such a quick time if they get the lucky breaks. And I think the Rangers have gotten that. Uh, it, again, if they if they play much more consistent, I think they're the team. And the last team I'll just throw out there because in uh, the inaugural episode of Break the Ice, uh, my guest with me on that show, Logan Lockhart, uh, you know, we talked about Minnesota and how I, I still find myself shocked when I look at last season standings to see how close they were to the wild card. I have seen it like 17 times and I'm always surprised. Like Minnesota was that close to the playoffs. Are you kidding me? So like, and here's the thing. They're not a bad team, but they're not a a team that they're not a great team. Yeah, exactly. They're just so in the middle. They're not going to lose games, but they're not going to always win them. So it's like, just just that makes me think like they may have a shot because the, the wild are in the West division. And aside from the top three teams, that division's fourth slot is kind of kind of wide open. Maybe Minnesota sneaks in, but th- those are my teams. Those are the dark horses to make the playoffs because the, those are teams necessary. Most people wouldn't expect, but you know they they actually have you know some of the pieces in place to to at least get into get into the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, big time. So, fellas, who will win the Stanley Cup? Well, actually, who's going to be in the Stanley Cup and then your winner? Jerg, I'm going to put you on the hot seat first. Right. So so like I, I mentioned uh, this year with the four divisions, so the way it'll work is that uh, the uh, the top four teams in the divisions, they'll make the playoffs, and then they'll be in their own bracket. So the first so the first seed and the fourth team, uh, <laughs> the first seed and the fourth seed will face each other in the division, then the second and the third, and so on and so forth. So, uh, so forth. Think about like the NCAA basketball tournament. How they're kind of doing it. Okay. Uh, so my semifinalists that I have, I have the Vancouver Canucks coming out of the Canadian division. Uh, it's really the North, but I we might as well call it because it's all Canada. Um, I got Colorado coming out the West. Uh, I, I'm very high on them. I think if they get some luck, they could definitely make it. Uh, out of the Central, I got to go with the defending champions. I think they're the definitive best team in the Central Division. I call that division the anticlimactic division because I think Tampa is just a step above even ha- not having their superstar sniper. And the East is so difficult for me because I call them – JB, I think you'll like this. I call them the division of death because that, <laughs> that division is stacked from top to bottom. I have the Philadelphia Flyers making it out of that division by a hair. 
by a hair. Uh, and my Stanley Cup finals, give me Tampa and Colorado. And my Stanley Cup winner, oh, man, I love both those teams. But give me the repeat. Give me Tampa with the repeat. Okay. Okay, okay Jerry. Jay. Okay, so out of the East Division, uh, I would probably say give me Philadelphia. Um, out of the North, I would probably say Vancouver. Okay, I'm a bit biased. Uh, so out of the Central, I'm going to go with my team. I'm going to go with Dallas. But I, respect I think, yeah, I think that it's going to be between – it's going to be between three teams. It'll be between Dallas, Carolina, and uh, and Tampa. And out of the West, I'm going to go with Vegas. I'll go with Vegas this year. I think Vegas right. is here. And uh, my finals will be – I'm going to go – Vegas, I'm going to go Vegas versus Philly, and I'll go with Vegas winning it all this year and their fourth year of existence. Yeah. They're going to spoil their fan base. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> For uh, expansion team in their fourth year, they won the championship. That's what I'll go with. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All um, right, so yeah. by the way, if I may, um, one, once we get to the final four, they'll actually be reseeded. So we, mm-hmm. we actually won't know the matchups until we get to that point. Like, we could we could see like it could be it could ironically be like you know east versus west technically it, if you look at it, how the old divisions would be or we could, Philly and Vegas uh, could actually end up being one of the semifinal matchups or yeah. even Colorado and Tampa like we won't know those matchups until we Imagine get so to the semis yeah because they, so, okay. they will be reseeded yeah all right so fellas I got I got two things well now I got one thing so I need I need a team to root for in twenty twenty one. So, Jerry, I'm going to ask for two suggestions. JB, I'm asking you for two. I'm going to put this up on a Twitter um, poll, and I think I have it till 12 o'clock um, tomorrow. So mm-hmm. the, uh, the, uh, the, couch, couch coach, the couch coaches will make the definitive decision. So, JB, give me two teams I should, for, the, for the poll. Okay. Uh, Dallas and Vegas. Dallas okay. and Vegas. <laughs> All right, and Jerry, give me I like two. That. I uh, first off, JB, I feel like you may have read my mind there because I was hoping you would go two different divisions so I could get the other two. So I'm glad we worked that out perfectly, man. <laughs> um, so he gave you a central and a west division. I'm gonna give you a north and an east. So in the east, coach, j- just because you know you're a Washington football team guy, I got to give you the Capitals. <laughs> okay. And hey, look, they're still a playoff team. I know we didn't mention yeah. them. And I know Boston Bruins fans are going to come at us. Trust me, Bruins fans. We know your team is really good. We just did not have them in our semifinals. But, Coach, I'm going to give you the Capitals just because the Capitals are still a playoff caliber team. I have them personally making the playoffs in uh, in my predictions. Well, not I didn't really give real predictions, but if I had to, I would say the Capitals make it. And, look, Alexander Ovechkin is a highlight reel any given night. So you, you could have that. Uh, and from the north, I'm going to give him – uh, JB, I think you'll like what I'm gonna give him here. I'm gonna give him the Edmonton Oilers because oh, the, oh, yeah. No, here's the thing with the Oilers: you have coach, you will have two of the last like three or four guys to win the MVP award. They have yeah. two MVP winners on that team, and they haven't scratched the surface on the success they could have. If everything goes right for Edmonton this year, they honestly could surprise us. Like we don't have them in our semifinals for now. But it's a legitimate thing that come like over halfway through the season, we could we could say like, wow, Edmonton may be a cup contender, you know, depending on how things break. So uh, the Edmonton Oilers and the Washington Capitals, those are the two teams that I'll give you. Okay. All right. Uh, so we had uh-huh. Jerk, I have a question for you. So what teams do you have coming out of the, out of the North Division, out of the Canadian Division? Uh, so I have the main three that I have, um, and I, I I broke this down last week. Um. Mm-hmm. I, I think the, the popular teams are the Oilers, the Canucks, and the Maple Leafs. I think mm-hmm. those three teams have the the talent, uh, mm-hmm. you know, on paper. Now, obviously, everything changes when you go from paper to the ice. But yeah. I think those three teams on paper. You look at Edmonton; you have two of the last four MVP winners. You look at yeah. Toronto, as you alluded to earlier, JB. They have a lot of salary tied in some really good players. They need to win. They need to get into a winning mindset. 
And Vancouver is so young and so talented. They were honestly, you talk about Philly, they were they were definitely a step ahead last year. Vancouver was kind of a step ahead too with the upset over St. Louis. They nearly came back against Vegas down three to one. And if they had just gotten some goal scoring, they would have yeah. made it to the Western Conference Finals. Like they're so talented. So those are my top three teams. Yeah. And like I said, the fourth seed in that division to me is up for grabs. I think the Flames are the early favorite for that. But like I said earlier, like I, I, I we're both kind of, you know, we're both intrigued in Montreal because if things break right for them, the, the Canadians could make it there. And that's something I would love to see. Like, could you imagine if we got like a Maple Leafs and Canadians first round matchup? You know, oh, yes. two, two of the original six teams going at it. That, that would be a dream. <laughs> oh yeah, no, that would that would that that would be a dream. And what about the East Division? Because like I I I absolutely agree with you. Like that being the division of death. Like I mean, like uh, I I I definitely have Philly and Boston coming out, and I have Washington coming out. But what's who would you say is the fourth team that you have coming out of uh, that division? I find this so difficult. Um, I, just by a hair, just because of consistency of how well coached they are. As of now, I have to kind of give it to the Islanders. Because they made it to the conference finals in the bubble, they're such a they're such a a, a very good, well put together team. Uh, Barry Trotz is a great coach. He was the Capitals' head coach uh, when they won the Stanley Cup uh, a few a few years back. So you know he he's so good there. Uh, yeah. My only concern with them is that during the regular season they were kind of here and there at times. Yeah, and like in a shortened season, that's my only concern. But I feel like I feel like they're going to have urgency of okay, we can't afford to be here and there. We have to really, you know, make a push for this because the season is much shorter than previous than usual years. Yeah, no, I so I had them missing the playoffs. I went with I went with Pittsburgh. Um, mm -hmm. I went with Pittsburgh over them. I just, I don't know. I think the Islanders, I, I, I definitely could see them making the playoffs um, if one of these other teams, because Washington to me is a team that I could also see missing the playoffs. I have them in there because of just like how consistent they've been. But mm -hmm. like with the Islanders, I think the Islanders, they have such a hard time scoring sometimes. Right. And also, like like you mentioned before, like they started off last year, they were like 16-3-1 and one at one point, And they were like at some point they looked like they might have missed the playoffs last year. So right. like uh, I, I worry about the Islanders. I'm sure you're, they, they're a very well coached team. So it's hard to bet against them, but like, I don't know, man, I think that this division is tough, man. One of those teams isn't going to make the playoffs. Yeah. No, not even just that. Um, it, in my article, I said that that division has seven potential playoff team. And because mm -hmm. of how it's structured this year, Three of them have to miss out, and, and yeah. that's and for some and for some of those teams like a Buffalo who who is dying to make the playoffs, especially because the Bills just made the playoffs and broke a drought. Like the Sabers, yeah. it's it's your turn now. Like <laughs> the, the, the Buffalo fans, you know, uh, if the Sabers can do something for them, that would be great. But you know, they're they're gonna have a tough time in that division. Um, yeah. And like, uh, you, like you alluded to, like you and me, uh, a team that we both have at least in the semifinals. Philly is there, and then the Boston Bruins who. Bruins fans, I'm going to give you this right here. This is your mention. If Tuka Rask does not leave during the bubble, they have a more they have a more competitive series with Tampa. I still think Tampa wins that series in the bubble, but they are at least more competitive. So, Bruins fans, you know, they they definitely have, you know, some uh some things to say about last season and they'll have a good year again this year and it's so unfair for some of those teams. Like I would be really angry if I was Buffalo. Like, really? I have to deal with Boston and Philly, come on! <laughs> yeah, yeah, Steve. Hey, I'm letting them cook, man. Like I, I know a little bit about <laughs> hockey, but I have, you know, not like like Jerk and JB. So definitely, uh, big time. So, fellas, let's put a bow on this week's couch coach live. Um, where can they find your social media, JB? Uh, you can find me on Facebook, Jamie Bailey. I keep on saying that I'm, I'm gonna, I'm eventually gonna get an Instagram. I, I promise, <laughs> some point this year, I'll get an Instagram. Get get on Twitter. I don't tell you. Get get on Twitter, man. Uh, okay. I, I am yeah. on Twitter, but <laughs> oh, 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 you like Kevin Durant? Like, uh, yeah, I got, 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 I got a couple of burners. <laughs> yeah, I like I like Colangelo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong. Hey, you gotta have burners. Trust yeah. me. Cause some things you, you just can't put out there <laughs> as a that, that, that's no, I put it that way. <laughs> yeah, we're great. <laughs> Churg, man, where can they find you on social media? 
uh, at Jared K40 on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, I post a lot of different stuff uh, on both those, primarily sports, of course. I, I retweet a lot of bunch of different stuff and give my opinion, send it somewhere out there in, in the void and see what happens from there. Uh, yeah. And, you know, that, that's where you can follow me. Again, I have an, a hockey article coming up really soon. It's, it's had a couple of delays. I've mentioned it a few times, but my Fall of Champions article, I think by the end of this week it should be posted. There's a couple, like, busy things. That's why it's been delayed. But I think this week it should get up on the site, and I'm really excited for that to get up there. Definitely yeah, you. Shout out. Uh, appreciate that, Steven. Oh um, yeah, so we got yeah, Love we, you, we, we good man. No, no man down. We good. <laughs> <laughs> we good, Stephen. <laughs> we doing real in hockey. Next man up. Right. He can't. He can't right. Right. Yeah. yeah. So um, definitely uh, follow the podcast. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram on the Couch Coach Lab. Also, um, YouTube as well. So definitely uh, follow the page on YouTube, and definitely. Um, so we did the poll just a few minutes ago, and leave the clubhouse is the Dallas Stars. So Ooh. we got what 14 more hours left to go for that. So <laughs> you know, so we got definitely um got that definitely. If you're on Twitter, um check out matter of fact, I'm gonna pin that to the profile. Um actually I'm gonna do that right now as we speak. So I'm gonna pin that onto the page. So and just and just vote and just for just for the hell of it, keep it vo- um vote and then I'm gonna follow that NHL team and I'm gonna rock with them. Might get some gear, might get some swag, you know. So <laughs> I think we um, gave you straight up coach. I think no matter who you get, I think we gave you four solid teams right there. They all have legitimate playoff odds this year, truthfully. Which is good because, you know, like we always say, like we always talk about an overreaction Monday with a broken hearts club you know, as far as having um, bad teams, following bad teams over the years, over the course of time. So to kind of have a team that, that's, that's, that's good, that, you know, that, like you said, have a good, good shot of um, having some postseason success. That's what I, that's what I look for. I'm glad you know, no one didn't give me Detroit Red Wings. Oh. <laughs> hey, hey, in two to three years, in two to three yeah, years, they'll, yeah. they'll, they'll be back. <laughs> yeah, no one, no one gave me that. So thank goodness, you know. But um, yeah. So definitely, thank you, fellas, for coming on to this week Couch Coach Live, man. Definitely appreciate you guys, and and we'll catch you guys next week, man. This has been this week's Couch Coach Live. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it, fellas. Thanks. All right. Thanks.